Mm. No, yeah, uh, it, it's a pharmacy review. We're reviewing the skincare brand pharmacy, actually re-reviewing. It may be a, a lot of information. It's covering a long period of time. Uh, you know the drill. We have timestamps to each product review in the description box below, as well as links. I'm just having a bit of a slow start today, that's all. Just a little bit slow. Do you all want to hear a joke? Daylight savings time. I wish I was kidding about being tired, but ooh, that's the reality. I think I'm on my third cup of coffee so far today. Why do we do this to ourselves? Twice a year, every year. I don't get it. Anyway, today's video is a re-review of pharmacy. I did switch over my routine to these products for the past three weeks, but again, it's a little bit different as you've seen long-term reviews of some of these products in the past. I actually, in doing this trial, I now have three empties. So I think this video may actually be a little different in that uh, it might be kind of longer-term thoughts. I think I probably won't focus quite as much on the ingredients. I'll still put them up on the screen, but I think that uh, having so much experience with these products, I think I'll probably be able to draw a lot of comparisons in today's video. So let's just go ahead and get into these product reviews. What I wanna do is start with the two newest releases. Oh, and one more thing, I did purchase the vast majority of the products in this video, although I received in PR, uh, feeling good and clearly clean. Everything else I bought. So let's start out this video with the newest release, which is actually a reformulation. This is Honey Potion Plus. In case you're wondering how the new version compares to the old version, I'll actually show you a side-by-side -side in a moment, but first I wanna talk about the ingredient upgrades, so to speak. They've added ceramides, Sika, niacinamide, and upcycled apple extract, which is where the uh, mama bird, no it's not. Our upcycled apple extract is made from rescued apples left over from juice production to be made into Honey Potion Plus. Shouldn't we get a discount for that? <laughs> Shouldn't we? If it's upcycled, should we be paying a premium? <laughs> I'm kidding, I do like this product, although, well, let's let's get into the review. So in terms of differences, I will say I prefer the way this one feels when you apply it to the old version. The old version felt really warm the second it contacts your skin. This one, it has much more of a slight warming effect. The new version, actually it doesn't glide on your skin as nicely. I don't think it really matters. It's a 15 minute mask, not something you leave on all day. So that's just a minor detail and maybe that is because they've added in all of those extra ingredients. And when I did my side-by-side -side application of old versus new, to be honest with you, I did not feel any differences in my skin. It's actually really funny. There's a review on the Sephora website where someone is saying, my skin was left so much more soft. I did the same thing, the side by side, and I'm just going, I, it feels the same. I wonder if that's because I use Sika already. I wonder if that's because I have no shortage of niacinamide in my routine. I have no shortage of ceramides. So maybe that's the reason why it didn't blow my mind, but again, I think it's nice. I also do think that the I'm from Honey Mask is still a better match for my skin. And I think this boils down to my skin type, which is dry and acne prone. I do really well at using products that target irritation and inflammation, and I think that the I'm from Honey Mask is better at those attributes. Again, I don't think this is a bad choice. It may actually be more friendly to all skin types. If you don't have the level of irritation I have, the I'm from Honey Mask may not do that much for you, whereas the ceramides and niacinamide in here might. But for me personally, it just doesn't displace the I'm from Honey Mask for my needs. This is still a better choice. And one more quick comment before we move on from this mask. So I really wish pharmacy would quit doing this, even though I understand why they're doing it. So if you look at this ingredients list, you might come to the conclusion that it is free of fragrance. After all, we don't have the word fragrance on here, right? But the thing is, Pharmacy has figured out a way to get around the panic around the word fragrance, and they've used the word aroma flavor instead. It's something where initially I was like, this is kind of sketchy pharmacy. I don't really like that you're doing this, but at the same time, I don't really want to be overly critical of something that is just based in a marketing decision, because if you really think about it, 
of course they made this choice so they sell more products. <laughs> It's really just an example of the problems with demonizing a certain word. You know, fragrance has been fine for a lot of people, and then there are some people who need to actively avoid that. But it's not now, and it's never been everyone. Some people can use fragrance. So, uh, yeah, you know, I bet this, this works real well on people who don't know that it means the same thing, and yet it does still irritate me that it contributes to misinformation when I pe see people say, this is a fragrance-free product. It, it's not. It, it's not fragrance-free. What are your thoughts? What do you think on using the word aroma in place of fragrance? Other brands do the natural fragrance thing. Let me know your thoughts. And I want to talk about the 10% niacinamide night mask really quickly because obviously I just picked this as a free sample. So I said in What's New in Skincare that I was a little afraid to try this because the reality with niacinamide is you likely don't need this 10% level. I frankly don't understand why 10% niacinamide is trending. Niacinamide has been studied at much lower levels. I've seen studies at 1%. It's studied at low levels, not 10%, but I guess it must work for some people because it's in so many products at this level. I was a little nervous about trying this product, but I have to say... <laughs> I actually do like it. Bearing in mind that I didn't use this every night, so I can't comment on how that would go, I did use it once every week. I got three uses from this little tiny jar, uh, and it, it actually worked well on me. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm surprised, but it's a nice texture. It's very cosmetically elegant. It actually felt like a healing formula. It, again, it doesn't match the scientific literature, but it, it did seem like my skin responded well to it. I'm glad about that because I was kind of bummed out when pharmacy discontinued Sleep Tight. Sleep Tight was a good product. I guess this is the replacement, and thankfully, my skin seems to be all right with it. And with this just being a sample, feel free to leave thoughts if you have tried this in the larger size, if you've bought the full size, feel free to share thoughts in the comment section below. Let's get into talking about the rest of Pharmacy's products. I think we'll do this kind of from uh, best selling. We'll start with the best sellers, which means we've got to start with Green Clean. All of them. Green clean and all of its derivatives, so to speak. <laughs> so you know how in my Ulta video I was talking about how uh, the Beauty Blender is so popular because it's in the middle of this spectrum, right? Well, that's what I think with Green Clean. I think that Green Clean is this huge cult favorite because it's in the middle of cleansing balms. It has that immovable type of texture to it, and yet there's a little bit of a creaminess to it. I'll show you a scale of what I mean. So on one end, we have these really goopy type of cleansing balms that I personally do like, but those do not travel well at all. They can spill everywhere, but they are enjoyable for me. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we have these really stiff types of formulas that are incredible for travel. But again, they're just, they're just kind of stiff. They don't melt into your skin as as much. Again, green clean right in the middle here. Even when we're talking about makeup removal, I feel like the best cleansing balms for makeup removal would be products like the Glow Recipe one, which I don't like so much that I returned. That one removed makeup so well, but it left a film behind, and I feel like on the other end of the spectrum, the ones that leave no film behind whatsoever also are not great at makeup removal. Again, green clean, right in the middle. Not the best for makeup removal, but far from the worst. If you're removing sunscreen with green clean, it's gonna work out fantastically without leaving that film behind. If you're removing light makeup, gonna be wonderful. If you're removing heavy makeup, triple cleanse. Honestly, no matter what, triple cleansing is wonderful for people who wear makeup. I'm telling you, super un underrated in the skincare community, but if you've got, you know, a bright blue eyeshadow, triple cleanse it off. The packaging is also brilliant. It comes with a scoop that fits really nicely into the lid, and uh, they also have limited edition scents. Limited edition scents in the same way 
the Tarte releases limited edition eyeshadow palettes. They hang around for so long. And this one right here, the Sweet Apple, mm, this one smells so good. Uh, if you want this one, it's still on the Pharmacy website. And Pharmacy also released Clearly Clean. They released a fully fragrance-free and actually a fragrance-free version of Green Clean, which I think was very thoughtful. It, you know, not everybody can use fragrance, so it's nice to see this released. Overall, you know, it, it's a cult status cleansing balm for a reason, even though it's actually not my absolute favorite because I do like those more goopy types of cleansing balms. But is it good? Yeah, it's a great product. Let's talk about the two moisturizers next. I'm actually kind of going to group these together and I'll, I'll tell you why. They're at such different ends of the spectrum. If you have dry skin, chances are you're gonna like Honey Halo. If you have oily skin, I do think you will like Daily Greens. Guess my skin type from the uh, amount of product left behind in these. <laughs> no, I actually think it's really smart of Pharmacy to have these two polar opposites where chances are you're gonna not like the other one. See, I think so many companies try to come out with formulas that work for everybody, but the reality is we all have have a different skin type. We have different preferences as well. And I think it's it's almost smarter, no it is smarter, for brands to have this great distinction so that you can really love a product rather than say, yeah, it's fine. So Honey Halo, the dry skin option, is actually one of my absolute favorite moisturizers. Not just because this is a brilliant system. Can all companies have a scoop that magnetically sticks to the lid? It's brilliant. But also because in terms of healing properties and in terms of feeling occlusive on my skin, oh, Honey Halo is such a good choice. So what I mean when I say occlusive is uh, think of Vaseline. Vaseline is a very occlusive product. The thing is, it's also maybe not that cosmetically elegant. I like it for the record, I do, but it's kind of I'm, I'm a side sleeper. I don't love what it does to my pillow. <laughs> Honey Halo has that same sort of sensation, and yet it's a very cosmetically elegant formula. It feels so moisturizing on your skin. Now, something to note here, I said moisturizing, not hydrating, because I actually, I, I've come to realize I don't think it is the best at hydrating. So hydrating means uh, delivers water. Moisturizing means locks in water. They're definitely different concepts that we, we sometimes do mix them up in the skincare world, but they're different concepts. So I think that if you have more dehydrated skin, it's possible that you might not love this in the way that I do. But if you have strictly dry skin, and especially again, like me, if you have a little bit more irritation, the ingredients in this are such a wonderful choice for irritation prone skin, the honey, the royal jelly. It is still a product that contains aroma. So may not work out for everybody, but I, I do really like it. It is absolutely incredible. One of my favorite moisturizers of all time. Now, Daily Greens won't be a favorite for me personally because I don't want an oil-free moisturizer. I actually, with my dry skin, please go ahead and give me some oils. But I do respect it for what it is. It's a very lightweight product. It feels like it just absorbs into your skin so it doesn't leave behind that occlusive sensation we were just talking about. If you have oily skin, you're probably gonna really enjoy this. It's very rich in antioxidants. Again, not fragrance-free. It actually has some eucalyptus in it, which is an ingredient that works well for my skin. Not my favorite in this particular product because it's so lightweight for my dry skin, but I do like that ingredient. It's, it's, it's another one of those nuances with fragrance. Technically, a eucalyptus is a fragrance, but it actually may be anti-allergenic. So this actually works for me. I would need a second moisturizer. That's what I've been doing for the past few weeks. But yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a well done product, just not enough on its own for dry skin. And if you have oily skin, let me know, are my suspicions correct? Do you all enjoy this moisturizer? Let's talk about whipped greens next. Again, I haven't tried every single product from Pharmacy, but I did try this one and I was really surprised that um, I like it. 
You know how I was just saying pharmacy is good at the distinction between products for dry skin and products for oily skin. They call this one a product for normal to oily skin. It's oil free, it has a slight foaming effect to it that by the way makes it incredible to use with a Foreo device or any other skincare brush, beautiful to use with those. So I think you'll like this if you have oily skin, but again it surprised me that even with my dry skin, I still do like this. and I I think the reason is because Pharmacy made a good non-stripping cleanser. See, over the years we've come to realize that while people like that squeaky clean feeling, it's not really the best thing for your skin, whether you have dry skin or oily skin. And Pharmacy took that concept and really ran with it. They made such a gentle but foaming and beautiful and enjoyable to use cleanser. It's surprisingly fun to use. It's got this, I don't know, it's just a, a fun texture. And while some people don't really care if their skincare is fun or not, you're also allowed to enjoy it. And I, I do, I actually, I quite like this. It's a fantastic choice for before my microcurrent and EMS devices. Uh, in case you don't know, you're not supposed to use oils before you use electrotherapy. So yeah, this is, it, I actually really like it. I think it's only fair if we're going in terms of popularity to talk about Honeymoon Glow, which technically should probably have been directly after Green Clean. This is a very popular product. A lot of people use it in place of uh, the Drunk Elephant TLC Framboose or Good Jeans from Sunday Riley. It's an AHA nighttime serum. 14% AHA, BHA, and flower acids. However, in all truth, this does not work for me. <laughs> so many people love this that I hate to tell you this, but it is actually one of a small handful of returns that I've ever made to Sephora. I can practically count them, y'all. Let's see, I returned the Glow Recipe Cleansing Balm, I returned the Augustinus Bader Rich Cream, and I returned Pharmacy's Honeymoon Glow. All of them irritated my slightly more reactive skin, but does that mean it's a bad product? No, of course not. It is more affordable than those alternatives I was just talking about. A lot of people have said they've seen incredible results in terms of resurfacing, which is what this product promises. I think it's just another testament to uh, the fact that some products will be incredible for some people and other people like myself will experience irritation from products that have made tremendous changes in other people's skin. Let's move into the section of products that I think are kind of maybe you don't need these as much type of products. So first up we have Feeling Good. Now I have a full review of this one if you want to watch a 15 minute conversation about it. But to just tell you really simply, I finished this in this past three week trial and I don't hate it. I think it's done well. But like I said in my original video, it really feels like a product where, you know those videos that are like, if you like this product, you'll probably like this product. I think I've seen Kelly Driscoll do those types of videos. If you like this product, oh my goodness, please try some Korean serums. In the original video, I talked about how it compares to the Beauty of Josana Glow Serum. I still think that. I think it's similar to the I'm From Vitamin Fruit Serum. It's basically similar to a lot of these kind of healing formulas that Korean skincare is known for. And so if you like this product, you can buy that from Korean brands for an absolute fraction, an absolute fraction of the price and a lot of those smell better too. So yeah, it's all right. I got this one in PR and I, I won't repurchase it. I, I just have too many Korean skincare favorites. The Cheer Up Eye Cream next. You know, in general, in my videos, I try so hard to explain products really, really well, right? I'm sure you've picked up on this. I want you to understand a product before you purchase it. The problem I'm having with this Cheer Up product is I just don't really understand why I'm so neutral towards it. I don't think it's a bad eye cream. It's fine. But you know what? Maybe my problem with it is that when we're talking about eye creams and we're, we're, we're talking about any product, 
When I use the word fine to describe that, that's okay if a product is, you know, $6. This is a $45 eye cream that I think is fine. And maybe that's my problem with it. It does everything that it claims, but at the same time, I don't feel that it does them all better than other products. So it's supposed to be a brightening eye cream that contains vitamin C. Well, there's plenty of other vitamin C containing eye creams that I prefer over this. In fact, genuinely the new origins with vitamin C. I like that one more than this. It has a, a subtle brightening to it, but so does the First Aid Beauty Niacinamide, or oh, again, the Origins eye cream. It has a, a nice texture to it. Yes, it's a kind of strange texture, actually slightly bouncy, but I prefer the texture of the Alpen Beauty eye cream. It's hydrating, sure, but so are very many eye creams. I mean, the Hamish Marine eye cream, incredible. I feel like one of the best attributes of it is that it really plays nicely with makeup, but so does the e.l.f. CBD eye cream for $12. So yeah, I'm actually, I guess I'm kind of ranking it last, even though I'm telling you I don't hate it. I mean, the Honeymoon Glow didn't work for my skin. I can use this, I can finish this, but do I think it's worth $45, or if you're curious, 20% off $40, $45? No, because there's so many better eye creams. I think that what it ultimately comes down to is that in doing a review, I think it is important to consider the price point because if you don't consider the price point at all then you know there's no difference between buying a $45 product and a $6 product but the reality is for a lot of people there is a difference a difference in how many tacos they can afford that week right so yeah it's just it's not a favorite for me even though it's fine and that brings me to my last products for this video, Pharmacy's Body Care. And I'm just gonna tell you honestly, I have come to realize something. I've said in quite a few videos, I feel that brands are either better at skincare for your face or skincare for your body. A good example of a favorite body care brand, Kopari. I don't think I like Pharmacy's Body Care. This one right here, this was the Be Clean uh, body wash. This is discontinued, so we'll just set it aside. I didn't realize it till going to film this video, of course, but no point in talking a lot about that. It was just fine though, fine. Again, the problem of fine. The Honeymoon Glow Body 12% AHA and BHA Resurfacing Serum. I was so excited for this release. I actually got this in that uh, Trin Mood box recently. I got a lot in that Trin Mood box. It was a good box, but I can't do it. <laughs> I can't handle this product because it's really stinky. I don't understand it. Yet again, it has aroma, aroma, but it is not helping this product. Let me tell you, it is, why does it smell so bad? You are free to disagree with me. Smell is something that is extremely personal. If you are sitting there right now going, whoa, I love the smell of that, I'm happy for you. I wish I could overcome it because I would love to use a 12% AHA and BHA body serum, but it just, I can't get over the smell. I had this brilliant idea that I would exclusively use it on my feet right before I go to bed. Problem solved, I won't have to smell it. It'll be way on that end of, I'm kind of short, on that end of me. But I forgot something, I'm already an insomniac. Bringing in that smell and attempting to sleep. <laughs> what a terrible idea. I'm just laying in bed all night like, <laughs> So I can't get past it. Again, I'm happy for anyone that can. I can't do it. I can't do it even when I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Sorry. But that's it for today's video. As is always the case, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below and you do not have to agree with me. You can wildly disagree and that is helpful for anybody who stumbles upon this video. But that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy today's video. Have a wonderful week. I hope you all catch up on your sleep and I will see you all next time.